Life, the Universe and Everything by Douglas Adams Chapter 24 It is a mistake to think you can solve any major problems with just potatoes. For instance, there was once an insanely aggressive race of people called the Celastic Armorphines of Stritorax. That was just the name of their race. The name of their army was something quite horrific. Luckily, they lived even further back in galactic history than anything we have so far encountered. Twenty billion years ago, when the galaxy was young and fresh, and every idea worth fighting for was a new one. And fighting was what the Celastic Armour Fiends of Stritorax were good at. And being good at it, they did it a lot. They fought their enemies, i.e. everybody else. They fought each other. Their planet was a complete wreck. The surface was littered with abandoned cities, which were surrounded by abandoned war machines, which were in turn surrounded by deep bunkers in which the Celastic Armour Fiends lived and squabbled with each other. The best way to pick a fight with the Celastic Armour Fiend of Stratorax was just to be born. They didn't like it. They got resentful. And when an Armour Fiend got resentful, someone got hurt. An exhausting way of life, one might think, but they did seem to have an awful lot of energy. The best way of dealing with a Celastic Armour Fiend was to put him in a room on his own, because sooner or later he would simply beat himself up. Eventually they realised that this was something they were going to have to sort out, and they passed a law decreeing that anyone who had to carry a weapon as part of his normal Celastic work, i.e. policemen, security guard, primary school teachers and so on, had to spend at least 45 minutes every day punching a sack of potatoes in order to work off his or her surplus aggression. For a while, this worked well, until someone thought that it would be much more efficient and less time-consuming if they just shot the potatoes instead. This led to a renewed enthusiasm for shooting all sorts of things, and they all got very excited at the prospect of their first major war for weeks. Another achievement of the Celastic Armour Fiends of Stritorax is that they were the first race who ever managed to shock a computer. It was a gigantic space-born computer called Haktar, which to this day is remembered as one of the most powerful ever built. It was the first to be built like a natural brain, and every cellular particle of it carried the pattern of the hall within it, which enabled it to think more flexibly and imaginatively, and also, it seemed, to be shocked. The Slastic Armour Fiends of Stratorax were engaged in one of their regular wars with the strenuous gar fighters of Stug and were not enjoying it as much as usual because it involved an awful lot of trekking through the radiation swamps of Quilzender and across the fire mountains of Fratvaga, neither of which terrains they felt at home in. So when the strangulous stilettons of Ja Ja Zigstack joined in the fray and forced them to fight on another front in the Gamma Caves of Carfrax and the ice storms of Val and Gunten, they decided that enough was enough and they ordered Haktar to design for them an ultimate weapon. What do you mean? asked Haktar. By ultimate. To which the Celastic Armour Fiends of Stritorax said, read the bloody dictionary, and plunged back into the fray. So Haktar designed an ultimate weapon. It was a very, very small bomb, which was simply a junction box in hyperspace that would, when activated, connect the heart of every major sun with the heart of every other major sun simultaneously and thus turn the entire universe into one gigantic hyperspatial supernova. When the Silastic Armour Fiends tried to use it to blow up a strangulous slet and munitions dump in one of the Gamma Caves, they were extremely irritated that it didn't work and said so. Haktar had been shocked by the whole idea. He tried to explain that he'd been thinking about this ultimate weapon business and had worked out that there was no conceivable consequence of not setting the bomb off that was worse than no consequence of setting it off and he had therefore taken the liberty of introducing a small flaw into the design of the bomb and he hoped that everyone involved would, on sober reflection, feel that the Celastic Armour Fiends disagreed and pulverised the computer. Later they thought better of it and destroyed the faulty bomb as well. Then, pausing only to smash the hell out of the strenuous garfighters of Stug and the strangular stilettons of Jar Jar Zigstack, they went on to find an entirely new way of blowing themselves up, which was a profound relief to everyone else in the galaxy, particularly the garfighters, the stilettons and the potatoes. Trillian had watched all this, as well as the story of Cricket. She emerged from the room of informational illusions thoughtfully, just in time to discover that they had arrived too late.